Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we're going to begin at 5 with the weather. Wind, rain, and potentially severe storms in the forecast for tomorrow. The National Weather Service has most of the lower peninsula at a marginal risk for severe storms. But right now, it's all clear as we take a live look at the Detroit skyline from our Windsor Sky Cam. Sounds about right. After all that snow we saw on Friday. Welcome to Michigan <laughs> yeah. in March, right? Let's get over to Kim Adams. Kim, let's talk about the timeline here. I know. Well, this is a little extreme even for us. It's a little dramatic. We've had some <laughs> very wide weather swings here from the snow Friday, measurable snow, to now we're talking about some severe thunderstorms. 61 in Detroit, 63 in Howell, 60 in Pontiac. It is now jumped up to near 70 down in Adrian with the help of a little late day sunshine. Tomorrow we have two rounds of rain coming through through the first in the morning, the second in the evening. It's the evening showers and storms that could contain a few stronger storms, possibly severe. So SPC has placed us in a marginal risk. That's the lowest on the threat level, but it is all of southeast lower Michigan. In fact, anywhere from northern lower Michigan all the way down into parts of Kentucky. So the timeline for tomorrow between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Widespread steady rain we will get a break during the day and then between 6 and 8 p.m. Chance of a few storms, some of which could be strong to severe. We'll talk about that, plus how long this mild weather is going to last coming up. Yeah. All right, Kim. Our other top story at five. Brand new information into the deadly stabbing of a pregnant woman over the weekend in Sterling Heights. Bizarre circumstances surrounding this after police found blood at the Sterling Park Apartments on 18 Mile near Van Dyke. Then a short time later, the victim was discovered nine and a half miles away in Clinton Township. Let's get to Sean Lay. Uh, Sean, what have you learned? Kimberly, we've been out here investigating this all day long. What we know is this is a boyfriend and girlfriend. The girlfriend was 30 years old. She was seven months pregnant, stabbed to death. Her baby, unborn baby, also did not survive. Now, the boyfriend is in custody. It's unclear if he's the father of that children. But again, he remains in custody. No charges yet, but police are calling this whole thing, of course, horrific. It's not a good situation, obviously. So what can you tell us? So uh, yesterday morning at 3 a.m., our officers got dispatched to the Sterling Park Apartments in regards to a domestic and uh, welfare check. Uh, because people heard noises or heard fighting. Correct. Yep. Neighbors it was heard. that bad or that loud at 3 in the morning, someone to call. Yes. Yep. A neighbor called and said that their neighbor was, uh, their, uh, a boyfriend and girlfriend were fighting. Sterling Heights Police Lieutenant Mario Bastinelli tells us officers got to Sterling Park Apartments. They did not find the boyfriend or girlfriend who were fighting, but they found blood a lot of blood and then another call to 911 from nine and a half miles away in Clinton Township. A man is seen covered in blood in the Claridge Estates apartment parking lot on Harbor. It was the boyfriend from Sterling Heights. He's outside. He's, yeah, moving, so he's, he's moving her. I don't know. He, he was outside um, for what I understand is is the, the female uh, victim in this case was still in the car uh, and uh, ultimately, someone called on him because he's covered in blood. He's outside. Lynn Mayworm looked out of her window and saw police remove a woman from a car. She was the girlfriend, and she was seven months pregnant. She had been stabbed to death. Her baby also did not survive. I seen the cops banging on the, the car door to get her out and then pull the body out and do CPR. It's just uh, horrifying. Absolutely horrifying indeed. Also spoke here to the Macomb County prosecutor. He says that police are working hard to get every single detail that they need in this very awful case here before charges are approved or even asked for. Could come as early as tomorrow. Kimberly, and of course, they involve the death of the 30-year-old uh, girlfriend and her unborn baby once those charges are approved and all buttoned up. Kimberly, back to you. Uh, uh, Sean, the driving from Sterling Heights to Clinton Township, what have you been able to find out and why? The boyfriend with the girlfriend in an already uh, an attack or some sort of domestic incident in Sterling Heights. Well, the apartment we showed you in Clinton Township is his mother's apartment. Oh. So he drove there, was arrested there. She was found in the car. I did speak to his mom. He didn't want. She, of course, she didn't want to talk about these details. Sure, sure. Okay, Sean, thanks. Okay. Police are looking into a partial home explosion in Wyandotte. The noise so loud it left neighbors wondering what in the world happened. Yeah, tonight our Victor Williams went to the neighborhood where it occurred and found out homemade fireworks are what caused the blast. Victor. Yeah, Devin and Kimberly, that's at least according to the police department over in Wyandotte. If that does turn out to be true, 
and that's definitely something you don't want to do. And the inside was uh, suffered significant damage at this time. An explosion on the inside of this home caused one person to be seriously hurt on Core Street Sunday night. Most of the damage is done to the interior of the home. Uh, if you drove by it, it looked like pretty much a couple windows in the back would be the only thing you'd be able to tell. But most of the damage incurred inside. Wyandotte police officers are saying it was the result of someone trying to create homemade fireworks. Although Chief Jeremy Moline with the fire department says he can't confirm or deny that at this time, he says his team is on the investigation. We're on it. I mean, we've had the state fire marshal's office has been out there. Um, the ATF has been out there. We've been out there. The fire department's investigating it and building and engineering has already been out there also. So we're very confident that it's safe and every, no one's in any danger at this moment. Another person was also able to make it out the house and is expected to make a recovery. One was a little more serious than the others. Uh, I know one's been released already and one's still in the hospital. And it may be a few days before the fire department is able to come up with an official cause. Victor Williams, local. Yeah, all right, Victor. Israel is canceling a planned trip by top officials to the U.S. after the U.N. Security Council unanimously voted to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. The U.S. abstained from the vote, leading the 14 other members to approve it. Previously, the U.S. had vetoed any votes on a ceasefire, but that position changed over the past week. Today's vote comes as tensions in the region rise over looming military operation in southern Gaza. It has been 10 years, 8 months, and 2 days since the city of Detroit pulled the ripcord and filed for the largest municipal bankruptcy in U.S. history. Well, today, the city hit a major milestone in its comeback. Let's bring in business editor Rob Maloney to explain why this development is such an important one. Rod. Well, Devin, let's remember that any city, in order to buy something, needs essentially credit. They need bond debt, okay? So when we look at that, when you have a city of Detroit like it was back in 2013, uh, where it had extended itself to a crazy level, uh, much like you, if you have a credit card and your credit is really crummy, you're likely to get a credit card uh, that has like an APR of like 27%. But what if you clean things up, made your life better, fix your finances, and the credit card company wanted to give you 17% APR instead? Well, that's precisely what's happened for the city. What a difference a decade can make. This has been going on far too long, and isn't it time to say enough is enough? The city of Detroit swimming in red ink back then, taken into bankruptcy by the state. And yet in March 2024, Mayor Mike Duggan announces a Moody's bond rating upgrade of not the usual one, but two levels higher. It's a bottle of black ink celebrating our return uh, <laughs> to an investment grade credit rating. So he handed out bottles of black ink to his staffers to take a victory lap over some bad history. It's pretty remarkable um, that the city of Detroit has higher credit ratings uh, than a lot of other uh, cities in the country, cities we were looking up at uh, for a long time. Plunkett Cooney Bankruptcy League Doug Bernstein served as local forest bankruptcy expert during those years. Did you see the city getting back to this point by this time? No, probably not in my lifetime. He says the city should indeed celebrate, but not for very long. The worst thing you could do is take the position that the job's been accomplished and we can go on to other things and not pay as close attention as the city's been doing for the past several years. Well, the mayor says, look, that's not going to happen because Ford GM, Amazon, Stellantis have all brought business into the city. The tax revenues are up. There is money flowing into the coffers, and they know better than to get complacent. The mayor says not going to happen again, at least on his watch or for this current city council. Back to you. Is this really something? Rod Moody's had something to say, too, right, when it raised its uh, investment yeah, grade it, status. It, 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 it was surprising, and, and uh, they were, they were re considering what they were saying 10 years ago, think <laughs> about this. The city's financial ratios are robust after a decade of solid financial performance. City management has adhered to strong governance practices, and Moody's expectation is that such momentum will continue. Like mm -hmm. I said, what a difference a decade. Exactly. Right. It's worth a bottle of black ink, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Rod. All right, we are off and running on a Monday.